What's up? CPO here and uh, back to working on the 500. This time I'm going to be working on the tail assembly, which basically includes uh, the tail box, the transmission, um, the belt drive uh, in the, the actual frame of the heli. We'll also do the, uh, the tail uh, rotor assembly and the tail boom. I'm uh, just going to take it a little bit at a time here. Um, so I did... Uh, uh, have something interesting I wanted to make sure I point out which I thought was uh, was interesting which is on my uh, my tail uh, belt uh, belt drive um, the you know it comes with these bearings um, basically preset onto here and what I wanted to do is take this apart because uh, I want to use a little bit of the uh, the uh, holding thread lock the bearing uh, thread lock, and I'll, I'll explain that here in a minute. But um, at any rate, so I take the bearings off, and uh, and I want to clean this shaft out. And uh, what I noticed here, uh, which I wasn't expecting, was um, it, this uh, this actual shaft here that the bearing goes on. Turns out it's been hand filed, um, probably because of a burr in the manufacturing process, which isn't uncommon. Uh, it's not uncommon at all to have uh, have a burr here and there. Uh, I just thought it was interesting that uh, to see it hand filed like that. Uh, not a great job of hand filing, I'll, I'll add, uh, but it is filed. Um, more than likely, when they slip the bearings on, uh, if the bearing doesn't fit on uh, the shaft, they probably do a little bit of file work to make sure it fits on there. Okay, so uh, interesting. It does show human intervention, which uh, which was interesting. It doesn't give me any grief. Um, I'm not worried about it. Uh, but I did think it was interesting because uh, I haven't seen one of these uh, that that has been uh, hand filed like that. So anyway, uh, that's what I want to show you. So I have that. Um, I have these uh, you know hexagonal bolts that we'll uh, we'll use to put this uh, tail uh, box assembly together with, and uh, I've got the belt here, and we're going to slip that into the rear of the heli and uh, so that's what I'm going to work on first so uh, so let's get to that so first things first um, as I mentioned um, I do want to use a, uh, a thread lock to lock down the uh, the inside race of these bearings uh, onto the uh, the shaft and uh, I'm, not only am I going to do that I'm also going to use uh, a little bit of shugu uh, to lock the outer race uh, into um, this this plastic um, mount for the for the transmission. So the reason we do that is because otherwise um, these bearings will just spin inside, and they're not designed for the bearings to spin around the shaft or to spin around the uh, you know the outside uh, mounting point. They're designed to rotate uh, inside themselves. So what we do is we just put a little bit of holding uh, thread lock on there, and that uh, kind of just locks it, uh, you know, lightly to the shaft. Um, so you're going to want to pull the bearings off if they're on, uh, double check everything, wipe everything down, make sure you've got it nice and clean, um, and uh, and then from that point we can add some thread lock. So now let's talk about the thread lock. All right, so the type of thread lock we want to use is uh, what is called a retaining uh, thread lock. You might hear it as a bearing retaining or, or a bearing retainer or something like that. Uh, generally, it is a green colored thread lock. Um, but here's the problem. A, a lot of places just say, oh, use green thread lock to use uh, with bearings. But the problem is thread lock isn't universal in the fact that all green is retaining. As a matter of fact, uh, here's a thread lock right here that is green, uh, but it is a wicking thread lock, not a retaining thread lock. What this does is uh, actually will um, be used for uh, applications where you already have your parts put on. Let's say you have a screw tightened down and you want to add thread lock to it. Uh, maybe you forgot to put thread lock on it, or maybe you just want to put it on after the fact. This green thread lock is designed to wick inside uh, the threads after the fact. So it's designed for putting on applications that have already been assembled. It is not 
uh, the same thing as the retaining thread lock. The retaining thread lock is a much lighter holding uh, thread lock. This is pretty strong, as a matter of fact, maybe even stronger than the traditional blue thread lock uh, that we use uh, for, for parts. For me, finding a local source for the green retaining was a lot harder than I expected. I did go to the hobby store and said, hey, give me some green, picked it up, and I'm like, what the heck, this is wicking. I thought it would be pretty cool to have some laying around just in case, so I grabbed it, uh, but that's not what I need. Uh, I did find uh, this four pack that has the actual green retaining uh, thread lock. This is uh, mercury adhesives, uh, and you can see here uh, the, the uh, MRT09 retaining green. Retains com retaining compounds are single part, low viscosity, fast curing, blah, blah, blah. Point is, uh, this is designed for um, just holding bearings in place and things like that. You've also got the permanent red, the blue, and the light purple, which are the, the, the more traditional uh, expected colors. Uh, so I decided to get this four pack, uh, mostly because it was the only thing I could find quickly uh, when I needed it. And the other thing is I don't need a lot of this green stuff um, for bearings because I don't use it that much uh, for bearings. Uh, but just know the two greens here are not the same thing. So make sure you understand what kind of green you've got and uh, and you want the retaining stuff for what I'm doing right now. All right, so uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna assume you've checked your bearings to make sure they're not notchy uh, and that they're, uh, you know, nice and smooth. Little dab of this retaining green thread locker. And I'm just gonna spread it around with my finger a little bit. Do not touch the inside of your bearing with this stuff, otherwise you'll uh, have unintended negative consequences. And just set it on there, um, and uh, eventually that'll kind of lock into place here. Um, do the same thing on the other end. Just a little bit. Smooth it around, wipe my finger off. Just like that. And then now what you can do is uh, take your block, get the other side here, and then eventually we're going to set this in just like that. <clears throat> so that's going to go just like that, by the way, um, with the, uh, the gear, um, the black uh, gear down, and then this belt gear is going to align with the shaft. So if this, if this metal uh, belt gear isn't aligned with your shaft, you've got this thing on upside down. Um, so that is that. I am actually done with this. So as I said, I don't use very much of this. So this is a perfect little vial uh, of retaining thread locker. So now what I want to do is uh, add a little shoe goo um, to this uh, and lock these bearings in. But before I do that, I want to put the belt on. Um, it would be very easy to accidentally get this whole assembly put together, locked into place, and then realize, oh, I now have no way to put the belt on. So, uh, with that said, make sure before you get this thing uh, locked in all the way, you get your belt slipped on. And for now, it doesn't really matter as long as you just uh, slip it on to the uh, to the shaft somehow. Um, we'll we'll sort out the actual orientation of the belt after the fact. But for now, that's what you want to get is just get that belt in there. Um, and uh, it's going to be kind of annoying and it's going to be in the way, but it is what it is. Um, so I mentioned before that uh, I'm going to use shoe goo, uh, and this is a recommendation actually. Um, uh, Finless Bob uses, uh, I'm sure other people do it as well, but um, I know he recommends it and, uh, and I tend to agree. You know, we're going to use retaining uh, thread lock to lock the, uh, the bearing to the shaft and then we also want to make sure we lock the outer uh, bearing race uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the block it, just to keep it um, from spinning. Now, I don't think there's necessarily a need to, uh, to put shoe goo on both sides of this. As a matter of fact, I think for assembly and disassembly, um, I would rather just put it on one side. So what I'm going to do is uh, just put a little dab 
here on both of these and then uh, settle this down um, in there. And then I'll leave the top one uh, without anything. That way, you know, this one will break free easy, but it'll be locked to the uh, to the bottom one or the, let's see, if the heli would be the right one on the heli. So anyway, that's my methodology. Um, you may do it differently. Um, there's probably a ton of people who don't even bother with this uh, step and probably run fine. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and do it and just demonstrate um, how to do it and show you. So how I'm going to handle this, this is uh, RV Goop, amazing goop. Um, I've said this before in other videos. Uh, if you haven't seen them though, but this is great stuff. Uh, it's the same thing basically as shoe goo. Um, you can get it pretty much anywhere. Um, I'm surprised at how many places I found this stuff. Uh, auto parts stores, hardware stores, you can find them all over. What I'm going to do is take a little bit of this. And uh, I'm just going to use a toothpick to get some on the end of the toothpick. Get this belt out of the way. All right, take a little bit on the toothpick and it's really stringy stuff. See how stringy it is? And I just want to get a little bit on the toothpick. And matter of fact, uh, this little bit here is probably enough to do everything I need to do. So I'm just gonna get half of it on one side half of it on the other side just like that um, hope you can see that not a lot uh, you, you don't need very much of this stuff and oddly enough the newer this uh, goop is the harder it is to work with when it gets a little age to it it's actually in my opinion a lot easier to work with but it does dry up a little bit quicker. You can see it's already starting to kind of solidify. I just want a little bit. I just want to tack it down. So do that. I'm just going to slip that on just like that. Make sure you don't have any excess uh, goop that is uh, getting into your bearing. I got a little bit on the edge there that I'm just gonna knock out of there. It's, it's already kind of dry. Knock it out of there. So this stuff, when it hardens, hardens kind of like a, a rubber. Uh, it's not like thread lock or anything that, uh, you know, will lock it down. You can see here, as it starts to dry, it's just a rubbery coating. But that will help kind of lock that bearing in place. All right, so uh, so I've got that there. Remember, your belt should be on here by now. If you don't have your belt, you should probably think about that before we continue. Um, so get that belt on there. Probably spent way too much time talking about that, but but I see a lot of videos uh, where people talk about uh, putting goop on, but they don't actually show you how to do it. So that's how I do it. Uh, if that's a method that works for you, use it. Um, if you've got a better method, use that. Um, you know. There's a thousand ways to skin a cat, and I don't know why we skin cats anyway. So, uh, so with that said, we can now put um, the rest of this thing together. All right, before we get too far, we do want to insert um, these little aluminum uh, hexagonal bolts uh, inside here before we put the thing together. So it doesn't matter which side you put it on, just get them in there. Uh, all four of them will go just like that. Make sure your belt is... Uh, running down the middle. Doesn't matter if it's actually on the gear or not. It just needs to be running down the middle of this. And uh, when we put this on, before we put it on, I want to show you this little notch here. This little notch is going to align with the tail uh, boom. Let me show you that. So the tail boom has a little cutout right there. And we're going to end up, uh, when we install this into the heli, we're going to end up sliding this in and we want that notch to align with that cutout. So uh, we're gonna talk about that a little bit, but I wanted to show you what it looks like um, beforehand. So at any rate, um, basically this now can just slip over the top. 
make sure your belt is captured in there. Um, and then uh, from there, we can actually move to uh, inserting it into the rear of the heli. So it's going to go in the back of the heli. Uh, this uh, black gear, the, uh, the anti-rotation gear, is, uh, is going to go down uh, just like that. And there are uh, these, these notches here on either side of the block that are going to slip into these cutouts here on the frame on both sides. So as you slip this in, you're going to spread your frame just a little bit. You might have to kind of work it through, uh, you know, I'm kind of pushing down on the bottom one and pulling up on the, on the top one here. And just basically going to get that to where it slips through. And once you get it inside there, it'll go to a point where it locks into place. So now, uh, let's talk about this rear servo. So the rear servo arm is now stuck. Um, remember I talked about in the last video, I'm going to leave these servo arms uncut until uh, I'm proven that I need to cut them. Well, here's a perfect example of why you're going to need to cut this back servo. Um, these, uh, these arms, particularly these bottom two, are uh, captured by this uh, tail assembly. So, in other words, this is going to have to come back out. Okay, and I've got to resolve this by getting rid of these arms. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, just snip these off with a pair of snips, and they should cut off pretty easy and uh, and fly around. I'm getting it pretty close uh, to. The center, uh, but not so close that it. Uh, I may as well get rid of this top one too. That it jeopardizes the integrity uh, of the arm. So that's basically that. I just have the one arm on there, which is all I need. Um, and now, when I slip this in, Now this arm can freely move back and forth without being hindered by that tail block. So there we go. Um, that's how that looks. Uh, quick and easy. And our tail block is in there. Um, so as you can see, these little notches are going to fit into those cutouts. Uh, and we're good to go there. Now what I want to do is uh, screw the hardware down. Now for now, I'm only going to screw uh, lightly these screws in. I'm not going to thread lock them just yet, uh, but I am going to put them on there with the standoffs. But I don't want to tighten them up too much because I want to be able to spread this back open to get the, uh, the tail boom in when we get to that point. But for now, I'm just going to put those screws in to kind of get them held. Uh, so remember, you've got these little standoff guys here, these standoff specialty washers. Um, and I'm going to use that and these screws here and that'll screw in just like that and eventually we'll tighten them all the way down for now I'm going to leave them loose and I'm going to leave them really loose just so that I remember that I still have to deal with those when I do my my final inspection if I forgot to go back and re-thread lock those it'll be painfully obvious again leaving these pretty loose so you can clearly see that they're not tightened down. Just flip the guy over, put it in the other side. Hold on here. 
All right. So that is that. We've got the tail block at least in place. Uh, we have our gear assembly uh, and our belt drive. You can check it for smoothness at this point. Make sure everything feels okay. There's no binding or anything like that. Should freely spin. And uh, we've got that. All right, there's one more thing. We do have uh, these screws and these lock nuts that still need to go on the back here. These are going to go up uh, final placement. They're going to get locked down and lock that tail boom into place. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to put them in place as a, as a holder so I keep track of them. So just enough to start these. I'm not going to tighten them. As soon as I feel resistance, I'm just going to stop because I don't want to lock them in yet. Just like that. See how much room I've got there? Because I still need to, to be able to spread this out and fit that boom in there. So uh, that's that. Uh, make sure you've got your uh, your tail on there now. And uh, now we can move on to the uh, the actual tail rotor assembly. All right. So I've got a myriad of parts here uh, that I need for uh, for the tail rotor assembly. And uh, we're just going to build this thing out. But basically, you can see I've got my tail box here. Um, I've got my grips, uh, I've got uh, the control arms, uh, the blades themselves, and uh, the uh, vertical and horizontal stabilizer, which I'll need for this, as well as eventually the tail boom. Uh, but we're just going to start um, with this, uh, actually let's start with the blade grips. Uh, so remembering the importance of disassembling the blade grips before you start and uh, making sure they're properly lubricated and then thread locked. Uh, these things come pre-assembled uh, but they're not they're not usable just yet. We've got to do a little bit more work here. So um, let's just knock this out. Take off these uh, blade screws here. And by the way um, Great little tip. I picked this up, Harbor Freight, um, just an impulse buy. I saw it and thought it would be a great idea. It's actually a, an organizer for uh, for a toolbox drawer or something like that. Um, I'm using it to capture uh, as I pull parts out. Um, I can just dump these screws in here, and uh, I can give them their own little different compartment. So I know that uh, if I still have screws, then I've still got parts. Um, anyway, just a neat little uh, tidbit. Uh, it works out really well for me uh, and pretty cheap. So to get these things loose, you're probably going to need uh, two drivers. Once you get one broken free, you should be good to go. And then we'll take a look at the order uh, of how this thing comes apart. So uh, as you can see, I've got my screw and the one brass washer. And then I've got my outer uh, thrust bearing race. I've got the actual thrust bearing uh, balls. Then I've got the inner race. Let's see if I can get that out of there. There's the inner race. And then I have a uh, regular radial bearing. right there. So that's it. That's the fully disassembled grip. Nothing else inside there. Um, it's going to go actually just like that. Screw, washer, uh, outer race, balls, inner race, grip, radial bearing. So now that we've got uh, this side off, we can we need to pull off the other side. And of course, um, if you're if you're holding this and it's too tight to turn, um, which is very likely the case, you can stick something through that hole, the uh, where the the shaft would go for your uh, slider shaft, and use it to hold the entire assembly in place, and that'll uh, allow you to break free that screw.
And as we disassemble this, I'll uh, help you uh, make note of the parts. So the other side is going to be screw, washer, outer race, balls, inner race, and the radial bearing. Okay, so that is that side. And uh, what you're left with is, uh, is this in the middle. So what I want to do is uh, take take a uh, a rag and wipe everything down. I generally like to uh, to wipe this stuff down, uh, and oftentimes I'll use alcohol, either an alcohol swab or something, just to uh, to get all the machine oil off of this stuff uh, from the uh, from the assembly. So let me do that. I'm just gonna get tape and, and wipe some of this stuff down, and then I'll show you the reassembly and lubrication. All right, we're all cleaned up. Um, I do have some multi-purpose grease here. This is uh, uh, what I use, um, just general purpose uh, grease. I use it on ATV bearings and stuff like that. Um, and we'll use that for our thrust bearings. So basically, what we wanna do is take these, uh, and there's the, uh, the balls uh, with a cup side. That's the uh, cup side facing down. If you flip it over, this is the cup side facing up, and you can see how it's kind of got that little cup, I guess, uh, or uh, channel on the top. That's the part um, that I'm going to push down into the grease and just kind of roll it around. And basically what I want to do is fill up that little channel with this grease, roll the balls around a little bit, uh, and then wipe off you know, as much of the excess as I can. A little extra is not going to hurt. Same thing with the other one cup down into the grease, roll the balls around, and just uh, fill that up. Okay, and actually set these right there on the paper towel. So that's what I end up with, uh, my greased um, bearings. Looks like I could add a little bit more that right there. So there's my grease bearings ready to go. Uh, and then uh, we're going to go back into the reassembly. Um, what you don't want to do is get grease all over the end of this screw because you're going to thread lock that and you don't want it to be uh, covered in grease when you do it. As far as the, uh, the reassembly order of these thrust uh, bearings, you've got the inner race and the outer race. Uh, and the way to tell which is which is the inside race, the one that's closest to the center, has the wider inner diameter hole. And the one on the outside has the narrower inner diameter hole. So as you can see there, uh, hopefully you can see, this one by my thumb has a larger hole in the middle than this one does. And that's how uh, you know which is which. Uh, some helis will actually say in or out on them. Uh, taros uh, historically do not have any indicator. You've got to you've got to go by measuring or taking a look at the holes. Um, if there's any question uh, and you're not certain which one is which, you can always measure with a caliper. So in this case, uh, I've got my caliper uh, zeroed out, and uh, let's just. Internal measurement on that one is 3.12 millimeters. And internal measurement on this one is 2.86 millimeters. So right there I can tell you that one is, uh, this one is on the uh, outside, this one's on the inside. So, so hopefully that made sense. Um, at any rate, you'll get to the point where you can just eyeball those and see which one is which. All right, so now what we want to do is uh, basically reassemble this. And uh, what I will normally do is um, 
go ahead and put my radial bearing on the grip and you can slip that on uh, to the shaft just like that. So normally what I like to do is uh, is make a what I call a bearing sandwich and it helps me get everything kind of aligned. I take the one with the smaller inner diameter and I slip it on my driver. Then I grab, oh by the way, with the, uh, with the groove up, not the flat side, the groove side going up. Then I slip my uh, lubricated balls on there with the cup facing up. So the open piece with all the, the grease in it facing up. Then the other race facing down. And that basically creates the, uh, the thrust bearing sandwich. Then from there, put the end of it inside there and just kind of let it slide down. And you're going to slide it down over that shaft. Just like that. Now be careful because, you know, you don't want to get grease all inside of there. Um, so just, just be careful that you don't get grease inside where the threads are going to be. But the next thing I want to do now is uh, actually apply thread lock. And uh, there are a couple schools of thoughts here. Um, some people will say put thread lock inside uh, those threaded areas before you put your screw in. That way uh, you're not at risk of running thread lock all around in there when you put your screw in. Uh, I do it either way uh, because I already have this, uh, this far. I'm just going to put thread lock on the screw and then stick it in there. So get it all set up. And uh, once you get your thread lock on there, spin it around off your finger. And basically, you don't want a whole lot of excess dripping off. You just want it to be, say I'll have like the first half the threads are wet, but they're not drippy. Um, that's pretty much how you want it to be. And then just carefully slip that down. Get it stabbed into those threads. And screw it down. And then from here, I'll slip something in, another driver, to give me some resistance so I can tighten that down. Now you should be able to tighten this down uh, pretty tight and still have nice, easy, free movement. All right, nice and uh, smooth. And then we will uh, we'll start the other side. Same process. I'm just going to go through this really quick. Nice and tight. Should freely move. And uh, we're good to go there. So uh, there is the final grip assembly. Real quick, before we get started on the tail case, I did want to talk about the, uh, the play in these blade grips. So when I assembled mine, um, I noticed just a little bit of side to side play. And I don't even know if I can, it's kind of hard to show you on camera. I mean, it looks like the whole thing's moving, but it's a really subtle amount. I can feel it more than I can see it. Uh, and it's a side-to-side -side play, not so much a back-and-forth play. And uh, my understanding is that's fairly normal with these older-style blade grips with the single radial bearing and then the thrust bearing. is uh, At speed, the centri centrifugal force, as these things are spinning, those thrust bearings will uh, will sort of lock into place and, uh, and it'll tighten up. But anyway, um, I was just checking on that, and it looks like that seems to be normal behavior, expected behavior, to have a little bit of side-to-side -side play. Just make sure your screw is all the way down, your thrust bearings are pressed all the way in, and you should be good to go there. Uh, so anyway, a little side note there. Alright, so back to this tail case. Uh, basically, what we want to do is just prep for uh, uh, the final tail assembly. So there's a couple little pieces here that I want to double check, uh, make sure we thread lock up. And depending on your kit, again, this is the uh, this is the Taro 500 kit, which comes with the metal upgrades. I know the Align uh, 500E comes with uh, a plastic uh, tail case, and then the 500 uh, ESP comes with uh, probably the metal one. So uh, if you're working on a a heli that's got plastic, just uh, you know you can ignore this part. But 
one. Basically what we're going to do is uh, take this apart. And uh, I'm going to toss these in uh, to my little bin there. I've got a couple different uh, things for keeping track of parts. And uh, I've got magnetic uh, bins that uh, I do, I do kind of like. Uh, let me show you that. This little guy here. Uh, and it works out really great, great for throwing screws and stuff in because uh, everything sticks in there. Um, this is kind of my catch-all bin right now of just parts that uh, I may or may not need as I go through the build. If I empty up a bag and I don't use everything, I'll throw them in here. Um, and that works okay. Um, the cool thing about this, oops, the cool thing about this is uh, it's got the rounded edges. Um, so it's, it's easy to just slip in and, uh, and grab screws, just run them up the side. So anyway, I kind of liked it. Matter of fact, I can see in here, um, I've got my screws for my blade grips still that I didn't put back in. So maybe I should put that in before I lose them. And again, uh, these guys are gonna go right in here. Not a big deal, because eventually I'm gonna put my blades on. This will keep me from wondering though where those are. And I can actually throw that into the bin. All right, so, uh, Let's see, this was like this. Make sure I put this back so you can... Uh... See what I have going on here. I, I derailed, I'm a derailer. All right, so uh, I removed the three screws from the tail case here, and uh, basically that allows me to take off this uh, side panel. When you take off the side panel you're probably going to have this uh, bearing captured in there uh, and then this whole piece will come loose. There is a shim on mine uh, right here uh, in between the bearing and uh, and this belt drive so make sure you don't lose that and then this is your uh, slaughter shaft. Another bearing in here you may or may not have a shim. Uh, I don't have one, so uh, I'm assuming you may not. Um, but basically what we want to do is just undo these metal parts. So that we can uh, put it back together with thread lock. So uh, that's basically that. Then you have um, this guy here, which is a uh, different size. Go to blue. It's a very long screw in there. This is what's going to hold uh, the entire assembly to your. Uh, tail boom all right so what you end up with is uh, this piece here that's got your uh, little notch that's going to go into the hole uh, in your tail boom so back to the tail boom uh, this side we've got the hole that's an alignment notch that uh, that's going to fit into and lock everything into place when we get that far. And uh, that's about it. And then the, as you clamp down, uh, this will clamp around the boom and, and lock it in. So that's basically the disassembly of the tail case. Now we can't reassemble it uh, entirely because we need to, uh, uh, at this point, because I want to make sure we have the belt in there because uh, part of the reason of taking this apart is to get the belt in. But what I can do is uh, start by at least getting the one side uh, put back together. So the side that's got your your notch or uh, your hole for your uh, for your notch, um, that's the side 
that is going to get the flat uh, end, the side that's got the Taro brand on this case and the, uh, and the control arm uh, bracket is going to go on the opposite side, so it's going to go like that. So I can go ahead and put this on in prep for, uh, for putting it the rest of the way together. Need a little thread lock. And when you put this in, make sure you're putting it on the right direction, which, uh, you know, you should see the bearing uh, entirely on the inside. It's captured on the outside, so um, don't put it on backwards. And I'm going to go ahead and put on this uh, little crossbar here. Again, the main... Oops. The main concern of this operation is just making sure that we get thread lock on these screws. Okay. So now that that's together, um, I'm just about ready to uh, to stick this in and uh, get my belt uh, in there. So now that we've got that far. Let's talk about um, getting the belt uh, in the tail boom.